Car Throttle. I'm Alex and you join me, three special guests, and for the first time ever, a live studio audience on the Hot Wheels Legends Tour 2022. <laughs> Woo! Uh, anyway, to my left are automotive design legend Ian Callum. Hello. We've got custom car designer and builder Helen Stanley. As well as TV presenter and YouTuber Johnny Smith. Hey. <laughs> oh, I'm loving this energy. <laughs> Uh, together with your help, we'll be looking at and judging your Hot Wheels cars. Um, cars that have, in many cases, taken over 10,000 hours of blood, sweat, and graze knuckles to create. One of these cars, as we all know, uh, will be a step closer to becoming a Hot Wheels diecast car, making it a true legend of the automotive world. And speaking of Hot Wheels legends, a shout out to Smith's Toy Stores, the home of Hot Wheels diecast cars. You can check out uh, their full range by following the link below. Johnny Smith, you've got a little package there that you're, um, you're yes. very proud of. Talk to me about that. What have we got inside? Yeah, this is today's suitcase that I've brought to work. This is what is called a Hot Wheels rally case. This was the first collector case for Hot Wheels cars. 1967, this one's dated. So this is the very first one. You're going to say, oh, Johnny, it's got loads of your models in it. No, it's actually got none in. Oh, no, it's got one because I keep all mine in the uh, packets because I'm one of those sad people. Oh, you're one of those. I am. I'm oh, a packet. No. I know it's sad. I'm sorry. But, um, so, yeah, that is, is sort of how it all began with that red, that iconic kind of red line tyre, and I just love it. So, me being a bit of a nerd, I brought it with me today. I was going to put sandwiches in it. Um, anyway, to everyone here, you probably also noticed that we've got a bloke called Ian Cook, a.k.a. Pop Bang Colour, with us today in his, uh, in his car. Give him a round of applause. So uh, Ian is actually busy working on some pieces. Before we check out this year's top 10 cars, it goes without saying uh, congratulations to all of our UK finalists for being here because we had a record number of over 100 entries this year. <laughs> and now, without further ado, shall we check out some of the cars that we got here? Yes, let's. Okay, we have a very impressive lineup. The first car, Byron Jones's Honda E. Byron writes, this Honda E is a one-off spectacular EV with a custom wide arch body kit. Electric vehicles are on the rise and our company decided to transform this one into a one-of-a-kind car, certain to turn heads. But I wanted to know, what does EV advocate Johnny Smith make of it? I caught up with him earlier to find out. Wide body Honda E, what are your initial thoughts? I think it looks mega. Yeah? Well, the car's mega anyway, and it, it does look like a Japanese cartoon character. But I think what they've done here works. I think the, the kit's actually quite complementary to the sort of it shape looks, of the car. It looks quite OEM as well. Yeah, He's it does. done a very good job on it. We've got carbon fiber, we've got massive rotiform wheels. Yeah. The interior is all completely custom. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, That's amazing. And it smells great in there as well. It does. We've got wood and we've got proper leather. This was not a kind of car which many people would dare modify. And when I heard that it was being done, I was a bit skeptical. But when I see it now, I think they've done a stunning job on it. A little bit touring car. A little bit kind of time attack. And also this massive carbon fiber diffuser. I really like this big wing as well. You can re reflect the Honda kind of decal in the back. That is nice. There's something, I don't know, someone's really thought this through. It's bold to do this to a car that's still very new. Is it Hot Wheels bold? I think this would translate to a small car really well. And of course it's championing, you know, EV, a different kind of generation of car owner. So it gets a thumbs up from me. Honda E, Helen, what do you think of it? I am a petrol head. I do have petrol running through my veins, but this is so cool. The fact that it's, it was a cool looking car to begin with because it just, it looks like nothing else. Mm. And the fact that it's now got this kit on it and I love the wheels, just the whole thing together is a really fantastic build. Ian, thoughts on the Honda E? Absolutely love it. I think if you look at it, it looks very professional. The car itself, the, the, you start off with is an extremely cute, well-designed car. However, what designers do, and I tried not to do this, but ended up doing it sometimes, is the original concept had big wheels in it, looked great. They bring out the real one, it's a bit overbodied. And this has sorted it all out. But I have to say, the execution of all the panels, very professional. Okay, next car, we have got uh, Martin Hawkes' 911 Rat Rod drag car. And Martin writes, it's a genuine 911 Targa with a VW supercharged 1500cc beetle engine. It was built on a driveway, was sprayed with graffiti paint, and has been used for four years. 
Here's what Helen had to say about it earlier. This is just a super cool motoring mashup. It's incredible. And I just love the fact if somebody's got a Porsche and it's ratty and they enjoy it and don't care. Having fun, don't care in this car. This has got a Beetle engine. It's got Beetle parts underneath it, but this is a legit 911 Targa. So, I mean, it really is a mashup. I thought when I saw this, it was a wrap, but it's not. It's all paint. And that just is absolutely fantastic and inspiring that this can be built on a driveway and it looks like a Hot Wheels car. It really does. Inside, oh, it's got roll cage in here. But it's also got a Beetle steering wheel, which is, again, just adds to the mashup. But I love it. It's just an amalgamation of coolness. Ian, thoughts on that? It's great fun. I think doing that with probably a very limited budget and the, the cheek of putting a Volkswagen engine in 911, I think is hilarious. I do love the idea, it looks the way it does because it kind of takes the mickey out of all these perfect 911s out there, of which there are many. Uh, it's also important to note, sorry to interrupt, that the judges will all be scoring these cars as we're going through. Johnny, thoughts? I think if it, if it, was, if it was a 911 that was sort of in a bad state of repair, and, and I suspect it was, I love the ingenuity there. Not taking yourself too seriously, and obviously this strange mashup of a of a beetle floor pan with a with a 911 it is a bit sort of darth vader i am your son luke or br father <laughs> you know you know what i mean it's a bold thing to do i would not have the guts to do it but then again that's the point of the sort of hot wheels legends there's Indeed. a lot of bold stuff out there and it's a piece of art okay let's move on to the third car now or should i say cars we've got andy and neil fens minis the first one, that Mini, is a custom show car built by my wife and I in 1979. I've recently put it back on the road in its original paint and re-chromed condition. It is recognized as one of the cars of significance in the hot rod and custom world and well-loved by all that see it. And then we have this Mini. See what they've done there? Very clever. Uh, was built by brothers Neil and Andy, like I said, in 1982. It is street-driven full radical custom show car very much of the era it was a regular show winner back in the day and since it's been back on the scene over the last 13 years it's still winning awards and you can kind of see why can't it's you? amazing uh so let's have a look at what design legend ian callum and johnny smith had to say of it so minis i love minis i've always loved minis but they're a bit different these minis you know i remember these <laughs> cars and custom car magazine all these years ago this is front wheel drive with a rear wheel drive look you look at this you know the a series under the bonnet all polished and chromed and stuff but the interior that's when you realize it's not a it's not a competition car it's a show car de-seamed oh yeah it's de-seamed yeah. there's a lot of work in that there is a lot of work in a that. a lot of work in that these are survivor cars these were built in 78 79. Yeah. what's great is if you think of the cars through history the the kind of the, the, the iconic custom cars that went through Custom Car Magazine and such like, they tend to go through about four or five different lives. Yeah. And by the time they got to 2022, they'd probably be Matt Green or something. That's true. Yeah. yeah. But they've survived all these trends to kind of hold on to that period piece. And they're period pieces. And they're still owned by the same guys that built them, which I love. This one here has this sort of funny car body. Yeah. But yet it's a street legal car. Yeah. I think the bottom line is, can you imagine these as little 164th scale die casts. Yeah, 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 yeah. They come in a twin pack. Yeah. Got to come in a twin pack. Yeah, they're definitely hot wheel contenders, aren't they? They are hot wheel contenders. Yeah. I'd love to drive down the high street in this. I would as well. <laughs> I want massive flares. I want hair again. Anyway, I'm going off track. <laughs> Helen, thoughts on that? I don't know where to begin. First of all, minis are super cool. They represent this country fantastically well. And then the colours they've used on them, they're just bonkers and I absolutely love them. They're so much fun and that's exactly what cars should be. Now let's move on to Jack McNeil and Boris. Boris the Micra is an outlandish one litre Nissan Micra K11. During lockdown of 2021 I decided to do a series on TikTok where I let my followers choose all of the modifications to my car. Fast forward a year and a half and Boris has evolved into a head turner that he is today. Features include a big wing, pink flames running down the side, a fully functional turbo kit and more. The aim of building Boris was to show people that you don't need a ton of cash to have fun with a car. Amen to that. So uh, let's throw back to Johnny Smith, who I know is a very big fan of small Japanese cars with a big heart. It's a great concept. You throw it out to the public, 
they decide how the car ends up, it's a dangerous game to play. And I love these micros, I have to say. I've always liked this shape. This was sort of peak micro, the bubble. I really like the steels. I think the steels are good. Matte black is always... Oh, it's always a winner. It's timeless. I'm, I'm timeless. There timeless. We yeah, we'll go with that. The interior, that's uh, something to behold as I well. I saw the Samurai Sword Shifter. Yes, I yes. mean, that is, that is out there. The throw on the, the gear lever would be quite tremendous. Yes, and it also makes a, a disgustingly loud noise. Oh, does it? Oh, it's, oh, it's brutal. It okay. is brutal. It's a project that doesn't take itself too seriously. Indeed. And I think it's very easy to look at it and giggle. Yep. But actually, you know, it's about having fun, doing stuff that's attainable. Can you see this as a Hot Wheels die-cast car? I actually could see it as a Hot Wheels die-cast car. And that's the point of this exercise, right? It's not about necessarily what it looks like here and now. It's what it looks like when it's like that. Uh, Ian. I could see you rolling around Stratford in this. This yeah. is a bit of you. I'm what sure do you, you think? Could. I'm sure you could. Um, <laughs> I love the fun element of it. I love this. It's, it's actually quite innocent in a way. That's what I like about it. You know, it's not being pretentious. So look at me. Well, they say look at me, but in a different sort of way. The tick not bit worries me. It sounds like a committee to me. Yes. And I've tried to avoid committees all my life. So that's a little bit worrying. But so you're not a TikToker yourself? Uh, funny enough, no. OK. Uh, Helen, a few words on Boris? I'm such an advocate for getting everyone involved in the car industry, no matter what the age, gender, knowledge, budget, and this is just such a fantastic result. This is just what you can do when you all come together as a community, and I think it really embodies that. And, you know, that's what Hot Wheels does as well, doesn't it? It's all about fun and community and, 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 and friends and everyone getting together and playing, so... Yeah, I love it. Brilliant. Absolutely. Well said. Uh, let's now move it on to the uh, BMW E21 owned by Colin Ware. And he writes, we completely built this from the ground up over two years, working one evening and the occasional weekend. Three mates and I made the custom chassis, custom floor, and used 4.4 litre V8 BMW running gear with a six-speed manual. So, Helen, you are uh, a self-confessed BMW fangirl. Bit like me, bit of a fangirl. Yep. Uh, talk to me about this, because you love this. Oh my God, it? I can't cope with this car. It's just <laughs> so beautiful. It's just a rock star, isn't it? Look yeah. at it. it yeah. the, and the fact that the, the paintwork is is paint, it's not, not graphics. Yeah. The car itself is extraordinary, and then you add all that to it with all the passion and... It is just, I mean, it just looks like a Hot Wheels car. It does. That is it's, a Hot Wheels it car. It is kind of BMW art car meets DTM. Ian, thoughts? You know, I love the old DTM cars, which I think this probably was originally a DTM style car. What's incredible about it is that these guys that build DTM cars probably spend half a million, thereabouts. I don't think you spent that much on this one, I hope not, but uh, <laughs> it just goes to show how much you get out of effort yeah. and, and direction without having to spend all that money. I'm sure it wasn't cheap, but uh, it's really well done. Johnny. I know that man because he's painted one of my cars over the years and I know he's extremely talented. That is the package, like I think you said. It's a, it's a fast car, you know, it's got a hell of a drivetrain on it. That body kit came from some faraway place, I know it was a headache to get. But just look at the stance of it and it is the antichrist of the vinyl wrap, isn't it? I'm a big fan of this as well. Do you guys like this? Yeah. yeah. Bravo. Well, that is a strong, Bravo. yeah, there we go. Okay, we're going to move very swiftly on to, um, a, I'm going to say it's like the polar opposite car. Can you guess which one I'm talking about? It's the Saxo. Oh, yeah. It is the Saxo. Uh, so this belongs to Nathan Powney, and it is the Saxo Max Power. And Nathan writes, my car is the only car in the country to have been trimmed on the outside. <laughs> Other notable modifications include hydraulic suspension, a NOS bottle in the dash, and a huge audio system. And when Nathan says huge audio system, I don't know if you've had a look in the back of that, but huge is an understatement. It is massive. And to give you a full walk around, we let Max Power aficionado Johnny Smith loose on the Saxo. OK, this particular project has transported me back in time to the early 2000s in a spooky way. I worked on Max Power magazine at the time and I swear this car was actually freshly finished at that time. The Saxo was such an influential car at the time, you can't underestimate it. For a whole generation of people it was like the car you had to have and there were so many people that bought them brand new and modified them. This takes everything to the extreme. It basically has an interior on its exterior which I had never seen before. I still haven't seen since and has 20 inch wheels on hydraulics. So 20s on a Saxo, I mean, just to engineer that in was amazing. I'm pretty sure it's got, yeah, suicide, suicide doors. Now this was a real moment in time. 
this kind of excessive custom change everything, you know, NOS bottle recessed into the dash. It was all about, you know, fast and furious mixed with kind of like an artistic expression. That's what custom cars are. It might not be to everybody's taste, but for one person to just go, I'm going to do this. For this car to still be around, it's quite a feat. Come around to the back. Oh my gosh, it's, of course it's snakeskin, isn't it? It's faux snakeskin. So the faux snakeskin on the outside goes inside. Four subs? Yeah, four. Flush tailgate, uh, wiper delete, relocated number plate. This was all stuff that was being done. This is a true representation of kind of early 2000s UK modified car scene. And I, I remember these sort of body kits. They look like the face of the Predator. Do you remember the Arnie film Predator? So they were trying to make these cars really kind of aggressive and different. This deserves its place in history. These days, a lot of people refer to as custom cars as vinyl wraps. They weren't vinyl wraps back in the early 2000s. You really did like sculpt your car and commit to paint or mad upholstery in the case of this. So is it a car that I love and I would do? No, it isn't. But I was there and I remember this stuff and I remember the influence that it had. And, and I'm really pleased that it exists in our car world. Uh, Ian, again, I can see you ride, riding around uh, Stratford in this. No, you couldn't. No, I can't. No, not absolutely <laughs> sorry, not. Sorry, Nathan. I love the wheels. I think the stance is fantastic. It's got ear on it, I presume, isn't it? Hydraulics. Hydraulics. Wow. Impressed. <laughs> but this design aesthetic, is it maybe giving you some inspiration for future builds? It's, yeah, it's interesting. Okay. All right. Interesting. I think it's the best that you're going to get, Nathan, I'm afraid. Uh, Helen? I am such a Max Power fan and I've, I've seen this at the last two Max Power shows and it just, it's fantastic. It just shows you there's no limit to what you can do with cars. Hell yeah. And there's just so much personality in it. And again, it would just, it would be a perfect Hot Wheels car because it's, it's just, it's mad. I love it. It is mad. Would it yeah. be the first strokeable Hot Wheels toy? Would it be textured? Yeah. But you are, you're absolutely right. It is a, per, you know, these things are personal oh. art expressions. Yeah. And they're not supposed to appeal to everybody. That's the point of a custom car, isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Next car, we have got uh, Andy Devine's 1978 Mark II Escort Mexico. Andy writes, around 10 years ago, I decided that I really wanted to give the car a bit more power along with a few more upgrades. I chose the Cosworth YB engine. A popular comment I get about the car is, that's not a genuine Mexico, is it? And I love watching the horror and panic as I tell them that yes, it is indeed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, everything you see has been built by me with a friend helping out with the metal work. The idea was always to have the car look like it was rendered, i.e. slightly unreal, like a Hot Wheels, even down to the fact that the badges on the boot lid are now stickers. Highlights include, and this is really impressive. Fully built Cosworth YB with a twin scroll turbo, six speed sequential uh, quaif on air shift. Wow. 600 horsepower on race gas. The list goes on and on and on. This is a, a personal highlight for me. I love the engineering that's gone into this. I really love the orange color as well. Um, but Ian, what are your thoughts? I love it. I love it. It's a race car for the road and uh, I hope you do drive it in the road. You drive Good. it here today? Excellent. Fair oh, play. That's I hardcore. Bet, I bet you, that deserves a round yes. of applause, yeah. doesn't it? You know, it's just uncompromised, isn't it? There's a lot of detail in it. Yeah. Um, I always have a saying as a designer, we create order out of chaos, but first of all, you have to create the chaos. I think you've created the chaos here. And, uh, and I mean that in the most complimentary way. One or two bits in it, I think I'd wanted to sort of fiddle about with, but the, I love the Porsche style vent on the front wheel arch. But especially the, the craftsmanship on the wheel arches to the body, Nobody does that properly. You've done it properly. At last. That is very high that praise. Is, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, Helen, thoughts on the uh, Escort? Oh my God. I mean, I shouldn't have come in here today because I just want all the cars. <laughs> it looks the part. It, it, it goes. It's outstanding. Outstanding. Is it noisy? Very. I, I presume, I'm, I'm talking to the production team. I presume we're not allowed to start the car in here, are we? <gasps> oh. does, does anyone want to hear the car? Yes. Oh. I mean, how sinister is that front end? I know. Oh. oh. Heavenly. That is... <laughs> Thank you very much. That's excellent. Uh, anyway, let us move on to the eighth car now. George uh, Chiarella. Ford drag car. So he writes, my drag car has a single turbo small block Chevy making around... 
making around 3,000 horsepower. <laughs> <laughs> All custom built by myself. It has a radical paint job that took me hundreds of hours to get right. It's undoubtedly the best looking car at drag racing, a real head turner that has the crowds going wild every time we are out. I built the car in 1999 and it has been part of the drag racing history ever since. Um, Helen, thumbs up, thumbs down from you. Oh, thumbs up. The colours just make me smile and it's, it looks like someone's just taken a Hot Wheels car and blown it up. And it's the kind of thing that kids love it, adults love it. It's just, that's a real cr crowd pleaser, that is. It really is, yeah. yeah. it's amazing. Ian, thoughts? Well, you know, I, I love hot rods and dragsters. And I think this is, uh, this is such a wonderful gesture that people in Britain can build them as good as Californians. You know, I think that's, uh, that has to be said. So I take my hat off to you. Yeah. It must, it's an incredible feat of... of engineering and it uh, really is beyond me. The thing for me that stands out with this is it's a competition, you know, it's a full race car and it's a show car basically. And to yeah. do those two things is yeah. really hard. Yeah. Race cars are normally a little bit rough around the edges because they work hard. Um, the attention to detail on that is amazing. Like you say, you could look at that and presume it was a vinyl wrap. It isn't, it's actual paint. paint wow. yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. And also, any car with the engine exposed out of the bonnet that doesn't quite fit under the bonnet cool. makes a perfect Hot Wheels car. Indeed. Am I wrong? So we've got, can you believe it, two cars left. Uh, let's move on to car number nine, Michael Sharalambus. Sorry, I've butchered your name. Uh, this is the Anglia Rod, uh, AKA the Misfit. Uh, so the, oh, all right, come on. I think, we've got, I think we've got a bit of a crowd favourite already, don't we? So, um, Michael writes, The Misfit has been a major part of the freedom to build whatever you feel like building. It has won awards at every car show, along with winning Best of Show at this year's Splatters Classic at Goodwood. Body has been chopped by three inches, boot shortened four inches, doors shortened by two inches. This is like a spec list of me. <laughs> uh, we've got custom one-off... Uh, high top bomber bucket seats, custom fabricated metal door panels, roll cage, BMW E30 IS, E42 engine with an Eaton M45 supercharger, BBS magnesium wheel, wheels and cross ply tyres as well as a lot more. There is a lot going on. Uh, let's find out what Ian thought of this. I love it. Of those of you who know me, I, I love hot rods. What I, what I, was, what I was suggesting was that um, you know, if Britain or if someone in Britain build a hot rod without any reference to American hot rods, we've, which we tend to follow in, you know, in great numbers, including myself. But uh, if you build it afresh with a British Ford, that's it. That's the ultimate British hot rod. <laughs> it's fantastic. And everything about it spells. Oh. <laughs> Every, everything about it spells what is right about you know, a kind of British way of thinking. It's a British car, it's got a small engine, doesn't yep. need a great big V8, powerful enough, obviously. It's got this great dragster stance. Um, it's got all the detail. The interior is incredible. It's just a fabulous looking thing. Uh, Where is Michael? Right there. Right there, oh, Michael. Right. Oh, can I, I need to give you a, a yeah. round of applause myself. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about it earlier, and you know, I'm, I, I asked the question, I wonder what Harry Potter would make of it. And, uh, and, and Johnny said, well, if this was in the Harry Potter, so he might have watched more movies. I, would, I wouldn't have fallen asleep in the cinema. <laughs> yeah. I would have stayed awake. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's one of the best hot rod, British hot rods I've seen. Wow. I mean, the, just that narrowed Anglia front end. So you, you can stare at it and you can see it's a bit of Anglia. And then everything around it just unfolds and you just go, oh, my God, everywhere I look, there's detail, mm -hmm. incredible detail. Well, uh, Michael, uh, hats off to you. Um, yeah. I think we all really like it. <laughs> I, hope the I, hope the rest of the, I hope the rest of the Hot Wheels world understand the effort that's gone yes, into a car like that. Absolutely, that is yeah. quite something. <laughs> um, which leads us on to the last car of the, uh, of the live stream, and that is Adam Gledow's Motor Psycho. So Adam has written, Motorcycle is the embodiment of what you think when you hear the word hot rod. Aggressive, extreme, a huge supercharged nitro burning, four, 417 uh, Donovan Hemi V8 engine producing 2,500 horsepower, a low radical stance with a chopped roof, 1934 Ford three window coupe body, big fat rear slicks and skinny front wheels. It means business and stands out amongst the crowd. Hard work and ingenuity have made this possible with the attitude of 
don't buy what you can't make. Here, here. Ooh. I like that. I like that. I, yeah. That's fantastic. I wouldn't buy anything. <laughs> That's the problem. Helen, what do you think of that? I can just see that as a Hot Wheels car. It's just got so much character, so much passion in it. And, you know, I, I, lo I love the statement, don't buy what you can't make. It just embodies the passion of a proper petrol head. Ian? No, it's fabulous. It's a pure hot rod in its purest sense. And again, I'm, 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 I'm so pleased to see them happening here and being built here by people who really know what they're doing. So, Johnny, you like this as well? I think it's awesome. I mean, when I was growing up, I always liked cars that maybe an older generation than me liked. So I always felt a little bit displaced to a point. So what, the 1800s? <laughs> yes, exactly that. Those, those cars with tiller steer yes. uh, and steam. But in all seriousness, what I like, <coughs> having that, that car like that and the, and the other sort of drag car in this room, is hopefully it appeals to a younger audience as well. You know, they can rub shoulders with things like the Honda E. There, is, there are no rules to this, but it's just such a beautifully proportioned thing. And like you said, you, you could just hold that up now and think 164th scale, that will look absolutely exquisite. It looks right, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't take it out of the packet, but it would still look brilliant. <laughs> that now concludes the 10 Hot Wheels entries. A massive round of applause to everyone for entering. And now what we're going to do, uh, you may remember when you walked in, you put a little piece of paper in a bag to vote for your favorite car here. And we're going to narrow it down to two cars. And then we're going to vote for the crowd favorite. So Georgia is currently handing out some pieces of paper with a, a red dot and a green dot. And uh, we're going to play Ready, Steady, Cook really with cars. <laughs> Whoever wins, wins my toy which I might keep, and also a um, Hot Wheels goodie bag. So there is a lot at stake here. The two cars that we're going to be voting against in, in red peppers, green tomatoes <laughs> is the BMW E21 oh. and the Misfit. Oh. Oh. Green dot for the Misfit, red dot for the E21. In three, two, one, vote now. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, that's, that's, that's nearly a 50 50, isn't it? That's an even spread. That's oh, very no. close. That's, are you going to count those? Th this isn't how TV works. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Ainsley Harriet? He usually oh. calls it really quickly. Right, I've got a winner. The winner is. It's the Misfit. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Michael, do you want to join me on stage? Michael, congratulations. How do you feel? Uh, it's crazy. It's crazy because the hard night, late evenings, early mornings, the wife's in the crowd. She's uh, I didn't know about it until about six months ago. <laughs> Get away. <laughs> yes. You didn't know he had she that She didn't car. know, no. <laughs> yeah, so we, we oh, basically... Oh, double points then. <laughs> so we were lucky enough to buy a, a property last year and it's got a garage on the side because of that car. And... Um, <laughs> When we moved in, it had to be moved from storage to there. So I tried to do it without... I took the ring thing off so she couldn't see like, wow. what I was doing. <laughs> Drove it in the garage, locked it up, took all the keys. So then she then came home and said, right, I need to get a drink out of the double fridge which was in the garage. What? So it was covered. So she walked in and thought, what's, what's that? So I said, oh, it's just an old car, don't worry. So she was like, no, 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 forget the fridge. What is this? <laughs> so I then took the cover off it and she was like, what the heck is that? <laughs> and that's how she found out about it. But, um, Amazing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, congratulations well, for winning the uh, crowd. Thank crowd you very much. That's awesome. And thank also you. your prize is this Hot Wheels uh, remote control car and a goodie bag as well. Wow. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Yeah, no there you go. No I can't believe you did that in secret from your own wife. <laughs> She could have thought that you were playing away, but you weren't. You were playing with an old Anglia in the shed. <laughs> OK, so it is now crunch time, which means that we need to pick our overall winner for this year's Hot Wheels Legends Tour UK. So, Georgia, <coughs> if you wouldn't mind, can you collect the sheets and then um, do some quick maths? OK. 
scary times. It is very scary. I'm going to get up for this because this is a big moment yeah. for me as well. Are we ready? It gives me a great pleasure to announce this year's winner of the UK leg of the Hot Wheels Legends Tour 2022 is... Thank you, drum roll. It's Michael and the Anglia Rod. Oh! Michael, come here. Congratulations, Michael, not only the crowd favourite, but also the judges favourite. Thank you very much. Your car is now going to be entered to proceed to potentially become a diecast car. How do you feel? Can't believe it. Like, I know a few cars here. A lot of the cars come to the shows that I go to and they're spectacular. Um, so I'm just honoured and I thank everyone here and the judges for picking the car. It's a dream come true. I, I've got loads of Hot Wheels cars. <laughs> Amazing. And thinking about it, maybe in the back of my head, I was trying to build a Hot Wheels car, but um, I appreciate everybody being here and everything. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for it. Right. Congratulations, man. Congratulations. And uh, judges, why did, you, uh, why did you pick this car? It, I mean, I, I, it was, it's not an easy task, is it? There's a lot in this room. There's an awful lot. So, yeah, it, it's, I, I feel guilty having to actually choose. Um, we've all said it before. I just think it's people's imagination. You're capturing a, a, a piece of imagination. All this starts with ideas and determination. And that's got to be propagated. Uh, we want to see more and more of, it, of yeah. this. And Helen? I just think that... The fact that all these cars are finalists, you should all be so proud because I, I just can't get over the quality, the imagination, <coughs> the creativity and the passion behind these builds. And it's really tough to choose one over the other because they're so different and they're all absolutely awesome in their own way. I mean, the BMW I am absolutely obsessed with. <laughs> I am going to steal it. <laughs> but just everything. There's something I love on every car and it's, it's, that was an impossible task. It was, it really was, because I look at that and I go, that would make an awesome Hot Wheels toy. Yeah. I just look around the room like this and the amount of effort, time and passion that's in this room alone, never mind everything else that's gone on around us as well, is, is just phenomenal. And, um, you know, this amount of passion in, in, in this country in particular for cars, and this is evidence of it. it very, very well said. Uh, that now concludes the UK semi-finals leg of the Hot Wheels Legends Tour. Thank you very much to all of our finalists. Congratulations to Michael. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Some good cars. From me and all of the judges, have a great weekend. Thanks very much.